Okay, so we're getting a little more brave. We're gonna try something a little more dangerous. Hold on to your freeze dryers. I've got this pre-cooled, so it's actually up to 14 degrees, or down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's kicked off at this point, you know, and it's been 45 minutes, so normally they say, like, get it up to 30. This is when you're doing frozen stuff, because you want to put your frozen stuff into a cold freeze dryer. You don't want it to wait a half hour as the freeze dryer gets down to freezing temperatures, because you don't want your food to defrost. So, it's nice and cold inside. This top row... <laughs> Sticking. There we go, because they might have been a little damp. So this has meatloaf. This is what we had for dinner last night. So we just made tons. So we'd have lots of leftovers. And some of these are a little tall. I'm, I wish there was a way to kind of separate or move these shelves a little bit. So I got two rows of meatloaf. Then this row is, these are sweet potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes. And we froze them in just a silicone cupcake pan. And so they're individual servings. And I've got, if you ever see two to one ratio or three to three, things like that, what it means is it's, it's just a pattern. So we have one in the middle and then two below it and then one in the middle. So, so you're staggering them out. So I staggered them into a one, two ratio. This next one, I'm not even gonna pull out because it is pretty tightly wedged in there is it's the same as the freeze um, frozen sweet potatoes, mashed sweet potatoes. I froze this one in a gallon Ziploc bag, but somehow, I don't know who or what, or maybe it was me, it just didn't lay as flat as it should have, so it kind of arches a little bit there. The other half of this one in the back, I have frozen shrimp. So cooked, pre-cooked shrimp, so everything here is cooked. Shrimp, I figured, is a safe start into seafood. I've heard, just like the garlic, that seafood can make your freeze dryer smelly. And so uh, we're, we're dipping our toes in the water just a little bit at a time. So we'll see how this one tray of shrimp does before we go on to fish or anything a little bit more. So it's all in there, ready to go. So I'm gonna do pre-frozen, everything's frozen. Oh, and I got to close my valve. So glad it reminds me to do that because <sighs> sometimes you have a busy day or you have kid issues like I just had and you'd forget so foods in valves closed continue all right it's starting up and it's good to go okay here it is 21 hours and 31 minutes and here's how it turned out this is our meatloaf. So I've heard that you can just touch it and see, like if you fill ice crystals or anything, then that means it's not done yet. But this is all pretty dry. So we've got all our meatloaf done there, dry as a bone. Our mashed potatoes. These are, um, yeah, I, they're, they're heavier than I thought they would be. Like they're still lightweight, but, but they're not like the styrofoam balls, like the, um, happy is. Look at this big old block of mashed potatoes. Huge. And luckily it shrunk because it was packed in there pretty tight. And here's the shrimp. So these are super light and airy. It's going to be interesting to see how those reconstitute. But uh, yeah, I'm excited. So I'm going to go ahead and bag these up and then I can put a batch in of Skittles. Remember you can do Skittles or candy without doing a full run. All I do is you come back here, take the, I'm going to take the trays out, and then you come back, put the trays in of Skittles, and click more dry time. Some people say they only do them for two to four hours, but I found our last batch needed about six hours. So I'm going to do that, and you don't, you know, just take the trays out, close the door, and just leave it be until you put the trays of the candy, the Skittles, and whatnot inside. So I'm going to do that and get some Skittles going. All right, it's actually a good thing I was going to put in the Skittles because as I pulled everything out and was bagging them up, look at this. This is the, that mashed potato block. So you can see right there, see the center? These, aren't, these weren't fully dry. 
just because they were so thick they felt fully dry on the outside but look at that whole inside section didn't get dried that would have caused serious problems in our food storage if we had bagged them up and not had them completely dry so luckily I still have the machine going I'm just guessing I'm putting these in because I'm guessing they're probably the same I didn't cut what into one but I bet they're the same just because those are pretty thick as well so the meatloaf I checked the biggest piece and that was okay but yeah look at these I mean you can tell those really thick parts so lesson learned um to not have things very thick and if they are they're just going to need a lot of extra time so i'm going to go ahead and put three trays of skittles with these and do for six hours and that should be good for these but we'll check again um after the six hours okay so i went to bed last night and this was probably done at like 10 30 but i was tired and i went to bed so my machine's here, look, it's all frosted over. It's been beeping for quite a while, probably like, hello, I'm done. So I'm gonna go ahead and open the drain valve. And there wasn't even that much pressure. So let's see how we did. Woo, it's nice and cold. All right, Skittles. Skittles are looking good, and potatoes, so I'm going to break one of these, boy these trays are cold, okay, I think we're good, oh my goodness, it says, no wonder it's cold, it says, it says negative 50 degrees, that's what happens when you leave it, and it gets super ice cold, so I'm going to select defrost. I'm definitely gonna defrost it because it's kind of a cold day still um, and yeah there's no way this is gonna defrost on it on its own in a few hours so I went ahead and selected defrost usually I like to after a long run let it do its own thing but uh, yeah no we're gonna we're gonna pull everything out and let the machine defrost itself while I bag up the Skittles and the last of the mashed potatoes. But I really, whoo, these are cold, cold, cold little, little uh, ice Skittles. <laughs> but uh, perfectly crunchy. I love it. Sometimes they're slightly on the chewy side. It just means they need more time. Perfect. It was crunch pure through. So we got some Skittles to bag up and this worked. Yay! So I bagged up the meatloaf and mashed potatoes in the shrimp. Let me show you how they turned out. So the meatloaf, this is the meatloaf. Well, I guess it helps if I hold it in front of the camera. This is how the meatloaf turned out. Um, you know, it's almost as if you would have just kept it on the counter and it dried out. It's just a dried out chunk of meatloaf. But um, I think it'll be really good. The thing that I realized later was <laughs> how are we going to reconstitute this? How are we going to rehydrate this meatloaf? Not quite sure. Um, some people have said they use a steamer, just to steam it till it's rehydrated. Uh, you could put it in a steamer pot, or you could cook it in a sauce like a gravy or something. That's something I didn't really think about until this meatloaf, and I thought, hmm, something to keep in mind as we're going freeze dryer experiment happy. Um, we got to remember how we're going to rehydrate it. So meatloaf turned out. I mean, I I think it turned out interesting. We'll see. Uh, and shrimp. So this is the shrimp. Um, they turned out airy. And here's the crazy thing. So this has already had a, someone took a bite out of it. Um, it's kind of like popcorn. It's the texture of popcorn. So it's just like, okay, sticking to my teeth now. 
um, it still has a shrimp flavor, but texture wise, it's like, it's like popcorn kind of very airy and stuff. Once it's in your mouth for a little bit, it rehydrates back and it's not a super strong, like fishy or shrimpy flavor. I kind of thought it might be pretty concentrated, but not bad. I don't know if I would eat a bunch of these plain, just freeze dried, but I think they are an awesome addition to have in your food storage when you're cooking up stuff because, you know, especially if you're in a landlocked state like I am in Utah, when are you going to get fresh seafood? <laughs> and if there's, if there's like a pause on shipments or a trucks or something, it might be nice to have a package of freeze dried uh, shrimp that you can add to a shrimp scampi or something. Oh my goodness, my sister made an amazing dish for us once that was like shrimp and peppers and and squash over couscous and it was so good. Oh, it was to die for. So good. Um, so yeah, that's that would be something that would be handy to have freeze dried shrimp for. So again, I don't know if I'd necessarily eat. I mean, some people might eat them plain. It's kind of like a popcorn snack, texture wise, but. As for the mashed sweet potatoes, we had problems. Um, so as you saw in the video, I, when I uh, pulled it out the first time, it wasn't fully dry. So we put it in for another six hours with the Skittles. And after six hours, I thought we were pretty good. As I was bagging them up, I broke one open and it still wasn't dry inside. <laughs> And at that point, I, I was like, you know what, forget it. And I checked it. Because I, I mean, it was one thing of mashed sweet potatoes. It just wasn't worth it. So the lesson that I learned with that, and hopefully you can learn from my mistake, is with things that are liquid casseroles and um, mashed potatoes, I think the biggest thing was the mashed potatoes are so dense that it, it wasn't like if it was rice mixed with something, you have the pockets of air and I think it would have dried just fine. But the mashed potatoes were so dense and thick that it just wasn't good. It probably needed another 12 hours or so to dry all the way. And I just wasn't interested in doing that at that point. So I threw them, threw them out. But um, in the future, if I do mashed potatoes, what I plan to do is put them right into the pan uh, while they're warm and spreadable and spread it clear up just up to the lid uh, the lip of the pan so so the only thickness uh, as they're as thick as the pan freeze and then dry them I'm sorry freeze them and then freeze them and then freeze dry them so you only have the thickness of the pan and they're pre-frozen that'll cut down on your time too I think that would make a huge difference. What I tried to do this time, I kind of shot myself in the foot because what I tried to do was save time and I was try thinking I was being a genius and I put all the mashed potatoes into a gallon Ziploc bag and froze them as flat as possible. But the problem was even as flat as I could get them, they were still like double the size of the pan. and. And, and of course they didn't take up the whole width or the whole length of the pan so if I would have just spread them out and that was something after that experience I ordered a second set of pans um, so that way now I can rotate them I can have some in the freezer and some in the freeze dryer um, so lesson learned with that in the future I'm definitely gonna make sure that I have anything like casserole or anything that's a wet sauce like that I'm going to spread it, go ahead and spread it into the pan, freeze it, and then I'll freeze dry. So another idea is um, like I did the the mashed potatoes in the muffin tins. Uh, I think I might do that kind of stuff in the future as well. I am a little concerned about the thickness of them. So instead of regular size muffins, I might do... Um, like tart size muffins in the future. We'll see. I need to do a little more experimenting with that before I come up with a conclusion. But that's what I learned from this batch. So <laughs> learn from my mistakes. Take it for what it's worth. And uh, I hope you have more success than I do. So 
And by the way, check out the new shirt. Can you see that? How awesome. These shirts are available in the blog, uh, in our blog store, what88.com. And you can go check that out. What88, it's like what, and then the number eight, and then A-T-E. So like what eight people ate. <laughs> so um, check out this. And we got some other cool shirts in there too. So uh, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And come join us on our Facebook group. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. And be sure to head over to our Facebook group, Freeze Drying Adventures with What88, to see more posts and information.